Hello and welcome to week two of the Championship Preview and Predictions, the show where I preview and predict each week in the Championship, except next week because I'm not going to be here, but I'll put them elsewhere on Twitter and stuff so you can still see how bad I did. Speaking of doing badly, let's recap week one. Didn't go great for me. Um, just to remind the scoring system, if I get the correct outcomes or win, lose or a draw, that's one point. If I get the correct exact score, I get three points and then obviously zero points if it's just incorrect. Quite a few of them are. Spoiler alert. Preston against Sheffield United, I said 1-1, it was a 2-0 Sheffield United win. Blackburn Derby, I said 2-1, uh, the result was 4-2, so I got a point for that. Cardiff versus Sunderland and QPR versus West Brom, I predicted draws, they both ended in a away win, so zero points for that. Middlesbrough Swansea, though, I did say um, home win, 2-0, it was 1-0, so I got a point for that. Leeds, Portsmouth, Millwall, Watford, Oxford, Norwich, Stoke, Coventry, and Hull, Bristol City, I all got wrong. Zero points for all of those. I didn't even back my own team at Ellen Road. Come on. Sheffield Wednesday versus Plymouth, though I did get right. I said 2-1 home win. It was a 4-0 home win. So a point for that. And then Luton Burnley. I said 2-1 Luton. Not quite. It was a 4-1 Burnley win. Three points going into week two. Not looking good so far. But let's try and improve on that this week. I'm going to start with Coventry versus Oxford on Friday night. Now, Coventry had a very tough start to the season. At the Bet365 Stadium, they lost 1-0. Mark Robbins knows how crucial a fast start is to a season. They'll know that from last season, how they struggled at the start, and that cost them later down the line. Oxford, on the other hand, couldn't have had a much better start at home to Norwich with a 2-0 win. But I do think that the Sky Blues will bounce back at home in this one, and I'm going to go for a 2-1 Coventry win. I think Oxford will, you know, have the confidence going into it, but I still think that Coventry will come out on top. Then at 12.30, one of the three 12.30 games tomorrow, West Brom versus Leeds at the Hawthorns. Leeds obviously falling apart again as they do, but last two games, if you include the FL Cup, not being good. 3-3 at home to Portsmouth, and even as a Portsmouth fan, I'll admit they probably should have won that game. And then 3-0 loss to Middlesbrough in the Cup as well. Daniel Farker. The pressure's piling on him, especially now with Rusa leaving the club. They've not got long now to replace a lot of these players. They've made, what is it, 140 million in sales? So they, they need to do some signings before the window ends. They haven't got too long now to do that. West Brom, on the other hand, under Carlos Corbram, a really good starts the season. Madger getting that hat-trick against QPR at Loftus Road. And I think this is going to be a really tough call, but I'm going to go for a one-all draw. At the Hawthorns and if they lose this Daniel Farker's job could seriously be questionable and I think Carlos Corbran could be one of the names that Leeds look to if they do sack him. Then we've got Derby County versus Middlesbrough Derby's first home game back in the championship they face very good Michael Carrick Middlesbrough side who as I just mentioned are off the back of a 3-0 win uh, at Elland Road in the cup. Derby on the other hand they did go through in the cup but in the league they lost 4-2 against Blackburn and their only real goal threat was from corners and set pieces so if Middlesbrough can try and keep them quiet from set pieces they should have no problems in this one I'm going to go for a 2-0 Borough win then the game that I'm going to be at at Fratton Park Portsmouth versus Luce in the first championship game at Fratton Park in 12 years can Portsmouth get all three can they get a point or will Luton bounce back from their disappointing start to the season at the Kenny against Burnley it's going to be a really tough one I think Luton obviously have some really really top players but I do just think the Fratton faithful will guide us I'm going to say a 1-1 draw but I did say we would lose last last week and we, and we drew so hopefully football gods that's, that means a win please Callum Lang on fire obviously from that Leeds game and we've got to remember that this is a Portsmouth side that still has a lot of players out injured you know McIntyre Paul Murphy Bishop is obviously out Yengi I'm not sure um, how long it'll be till he's back. Jacob Farrell as well. So still got players to come back uh, and it was a very promising start. Then at Ashton Gate, Bristol City. Bristol City will probably come away from their game against Hull, feeling they should have won it, conceded the penalty late on in the game. Millwall also probably will come away from their game against Watford, feeling they should have won it, but they did win at Fratton Park against Portsmouth in the Cup in the week. But I'm not going to be reading too much into that. I do think that Bristol City will have what it takes to stop Neil Harris's men. I'm going to go for a 1-0 narrow Bristol City win. Then Wayne Rooney's first, home, well, they were home in the cup, but first league home game under Wayne Rooney for Plymouth. They have a tough test in Hull City to Malta's first league away game as manager of Hull City. This is going to be, I was going to say a close one, but they were absolutely dreadful, weren't they, against Sheffield Wednesday. 4-0 loss. They didn't look like ever troubling Beadle in goal they didn't look like 
ever doing anything of any note. They were really quite bad. So I'm going to say that they're going to lose 2-1. Then in Wales, Swansea versus Preston. I think this is going to be a tight one. Obviously, Preston sacked their manager after just one game. Fantastic, obviously. Why not? Why would you not do that? So undercut caretaker management for a couple of weeks. Didn't hinder them too much in the cup. They progressed in that. But I do think that Swansea and Luke Williams' men will be too much for them to handle. So I'm going to go for a narrow 2-1 Swansea win. Then Watford versus Stoke. Both these teams got off to winning starts when probably most people didn't expect them to um, against Millwall and Coventry respectively. I think this one's going to be really close, so close that I'm going to go for a 2-2 draw. I said before the season that I was, you know, like really worried about Watford and, and whether they could be in a relegation battle, but obviously it's only been one game, but Tom Cleverley looks like he, he has his ambitions much higher than a relegation dogfight. Then Sheffield United against QPR. Sheffield United got off to winning ways against Preston last Friday. And they've got such a good squad, which I just think is going to be too good for Marty Sifuentes's... Marty Sifuentes's... Marty Sifuentes's QPR. So I'm going to go for... Especially at Bremel Lane as well. So I'm going to go for a 3-1 Sheffield United home win. I think if they can get... You know, Callum O'Hare firing, Kiefer Moore firing. They could be definitely looking at promotion to the Premier League. Then Norwich versus Blackburn. Norwich got off to a very disappointing start away at the Kassam. 2-0 defeat. Looks very poor defensively. That's something they'll be hoping to improve on at the first home game of the season against Blackburn Rovers, who got off to a good start but have just lost their best player in Sammy Smodix. He's gone to Ipswich, so could that really hinder them that much? I mean... It probably will. He's such a crucial player to them. But nevertheless, they, they've got Max Gay, who was looks really good. They scored six in the cup. They scored four in the league against Derby. So goals might not be a problem, even though Sammy Smodix is leaving. Ahashi also looks like a looks like a good signing. And I think John Eustace's men will be able to get a draw at Carrow Road. I'm going to go for a 1-1 draw. Then in East Lancashire, Burnley take on Cardiff City. Cardiff got off to a poor start against Sunderland. They had the majority of the possession, but couldn't create anything from that. And Sunderland came away victorious. Burnley, on the other hand, came away victorious against Luton at Kenilworth Road by some margin, 4-1 winners. A really good start to the Scott Parker era at Burnley. No doubt he'll get them promoted and then get them relegated this season after. But in this one, I think it's really hard to look past Burnley. I think they look so strong at the moment, especially against the Cardiff side, who looked to dominate the ball against Sunderland. If they do that again, I think there could be problems for them. And I'm going to say a 2-0 Burnley win. And up next, finally, it's Sunderland versus Sheffield Wednesday on Sunday at the Stadium of Lights. Both teams got up to winning ways. Sheffield Wednesday 4-0, as I mentioned earlier. Sunderland 2-0, mentioned a moment ago against Cardiff. It's going to be really, really close this one. This is a tough one to call. Two teams looking to be the outside shelf for the playoffs. But I just think, excuse the pun, but they're on a roll. You know, because like Danny roll. I think Sheffield Wednesday will just about sneak past Sunderland and get a 2-1 win and make it 2 from 2. So those are my predictions. Let me know yours, as always, in the comments below. I'd love to see them. Make sure to make fun of my predictions when I get them wrong. Now time for some fantasy EFL picks. These are the best championship players in the fantasy EFL game this week. The best one, I think, is Latte Lath. It's hard to look past in Derby away. Derby shipped four goals to not a week, but a... a Blackburn side which people were tipping for relegation so imagine what Latte Laugh can get up to with Finn Azaz and the creative players around him. Next up I'm going to go for Callum O'Hare against QPR at home. First home game for Sheffield United. I think he could cause them some real problems. Then I'm going to go for Ryan Giles. Plymouth away. We saw how poor Plymouth were um, against Sheffield Wednesday and I think Ryan Giles could not only get a clean sheet but also get some attacking returns. And then another defender I'm going to go for Lucas Perez, uh, who obviously got two assists against Luton. He's got Cardiff at home. That should be a clean sheet and a couple or one attacking return. There you have it. That is my preview and predictions for week two of the championship. Like I said, I'm not going to be doing one for next week because I'm going to be away. Then we'll be straight back. Actually, I might be away. For... No, I think I should be able to do. Yeah, okay. But I'll, I'll be um, straight back after that, getting ready to um, get more wrong basically let's see if we can get more than three this week make sure if you see if you can get more than three as well put them in the comments below remember three points for um a correct exact score one for the correct outcome none for an incorrect score thank you for watching i'll see you next time goodbye